Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Whistle Mountain, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goose, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to Whistle Mountain, everybody, where we are going to be deploying our airships to build up a massive contraption to generate all kinds of points and along the way deal with the constantly rising floodwaters that will drown out our contraption and take it offline. And along the way, we might save some of our workers who are down here struggling to get out of the whirlpool. I've already got the game set up here. I'm the yellow player. Jen's the blue player. We've got a few workers already in need of rescuing. And as part of setup, each of us got a special power. And we drew two and placed one scaffolding tile. So we've already done that. Uh, so we've got the beginnings of some scaffolding for our big contraption we're building uh, semi-collaboratively. And we are ready to go. I am the first player, which is why I have one water, one iron, one gold, and one coal, and no whistles. Jen, as the second player, she gets a second water. And I am the requisitioner, which means um, on each turn, I can turn a scaffolding into a card or a card into scaffolding. My choice. And Jen, as the planner, whenever she gets an upgrade, she also gets a small contraption machine for free. So, that's our situation. Let's get going. I am the first player. And I think for starters, this is a worker placement game. We each have three workers, a hot air balloon, a blimp, and a dreadnought. I'm going to go on ahead and take my blimp, I think, and fly it on over here and start doing some worker placement. Now, there's two different types of spaces we can go. We can actually park ourselves here in this valley where we're building the big mega contraption to either collect resources off the scaffolding or if we previously built machine pieces, run the machines. So we can send them out here or we can dock in any of these outer worker placement spots to get access to various things as well. Now, I think I'm gonna right out of the gate try to collect some more resources. So, I'm gonna dock um, out here in the valley, which means, well, if we look at our contraption, you cannot land directly on the scaffolding, guys, because they're pointy and pokey and they'll pop your balloon, but you can always land adjacent to a scaffolding, at least one. So I could land like this. You can see I'm occupying these two spaces, or I could land like this, or I could land like this. None of those would do me any good because I want to land adjacent to resources so I can collect them. So I think I'm going to land like this, taking up these two spaces, which means I will collect some water from the uh, from the lake, the river, and some coal and some gold. I'll be happy to get all of that. So I got some water, some coal, and some gold. All righty. And that's a nice start. All right, and my turn is over. On most turns, you are going to take one of your worker balloons and basically deploy it to one of the outer docks or to the canyon itself. It is now Jen's turn. I think Jen... She'll follow suit. She'll take her size two, and she'll grab the other spot where we can get some resources right from the get-go. Now, she could, say, use her little size one and put it here, but then she would only be getting two water. Uh, but where she uses her size two, she's getting two water and a uh, coal as well. So Jen went on ahead, and that was a starting move for her, which got her two more water. So she is full. Although, actually, it's not till the end of the round. Um, you can go over, but at the end of the round, you have to, uh, you can't go beyond your storage capacity. So, Jen got two water and some coal. All right. That was her turn. It is now my turn again. I've got two more workers. And I think I'm now going to send my little balloon. I could come over here. Well, actually... There aren't any um, places I could land to get any resources. I can't just land wherever. I have to either land on a previously built machine or adjacent to machines or scaffolding. You know, kind of hook myself. So I'm going to send this over to one of the outer docks. I'm going to come over here where... If I've got two or three coal, uh, first player to come here spends two. The second player to come here spends three. I can actually get a machine upgrade, which is going to be very nice. Now, which one of these do I want? The wet pointer, the wet iron, or the whistler? Um, these are going to be machines that I can install in the valley, and both of us will be able to use them in the future. I'll be creating more worker placement spots, basically. And, well... 
they're you they're different in that they have a special resource they give like this whistler whoever lands on or adjacent to this gets a whistle and whistles as you might guess from the title whistle mountain are the most valuable things because they're wild cards they can stand in for any resource so i could build the whistler and it would give me four points or i could build the wet iron which would give me six points and it generates water and iron or the wet um, pointer which generates water and victory points and is worth seven so you could guess, this is the weakest of them because it gives me the most points for building it. Whereas this gives me the fewest points because, hey, it generates wild cards. So anyway, I'm going to build one of these. And I think, you know, looking around, right now we've got ways to generate um, coal and, uh, um, what do you call it, gold and water, but no way to generate steel. So this wet iron, or not uh, steel, iron, this makes sense. I think I'm going to take this and it goes in my storage. I don't build it now. Um, I just come over here. I spend two coal to do it. And I've got something now I can build later. I've spent all the resources, the two coal I need to get the wet iron up and running. All right, so that was my second action. It is now Jen's turn for a second action. And I think... Well, she's got two coal, which means she doesn't have enough. She would need three coal to build another. And by the way, a new machine came out. It's a wet coal. It generates water and coal. All of these little tiny contraptions, they just generate resources in different combinations. These middle-sized and these large ones, which require more. To get a middle-sized one requires three iron. To get a large one requires three iron and two coal. These start unlocking all kinds of cool special powers, like discarding cards to get whistles and points, or converting whistles um, to uh, move workers around. Um, you know, all kinds of stuff. So, let's see here. Jen's turn. She'll go in and take her little. And again, there's no place to go in the valley. Uh, because, well, you could come over here, but it would be pointless because you'd get nothing because there's nothing generated in any of these remaining spaces. So I think Jen's going to dock, and she'll come over here. This space allows her to rescue one of her workers who are sitting down here. And you want to do that at some point in the game because at the end of the game, you lose five victory points for every one of these that are still struggling to get out. So Jen, by coming over here, is basically rescuing one of her workers. And you take them and you put them somewhere in an empty space on the existing scaffolding, which is very nice. So Jen could put this guy here, 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 here. She'll put him right here. All right. And uh, that's going to come in very handy for Jen in a bit because Jen can see I'm going to be, I'm about to build this wet iron, which is going to go out here and Jen by putting her worker here means he stands ready to assist with the building of this which is going to benefit Jen and Jen shows this space because uh, as you might imagine for me to be able to build this I have to completely cover existing scaffolding I can't like you know just cover empty space so I could build this in this space or this space and by Jen putting her worker here I have no choice when I build my wet iron, I have to employ Jen's worker, and Jen will get the benefit from that. So Jen could see I'm about to build, and she figured, hey, I better rescue somebody, which saves her five points. Plus, he will get another bonus when I eventually build my wet iron. Okay, so that was Jen's second turn. I've now got a third turn. And I could deploy my Dreadnought. Now, um, as you might imagine, these are really awesome when you put them into the valley, because they could pick up, they, they take up three spaces. So they could pick up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine potential things. Um, you know, if you've got them in an empty space, it's surrounded on all sides by lots of stuff. So these are very, very useful. But right now, it's not going to help me out here because again, there's nothing else for me to pick up. So I might as well go on ahead and dock in one of the other areas. Now, I, do, I don't have enough iron or coal or enough iron to get any more machines to build. I don't have enough coal to get another small um, I could come over here and get myself more scaffolding. So that's interesting. If um, I, I come here, I can get one scaffolding or I can get two scaffolding if I spend a whistle or three scaffolding if I spent two whistles. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any whistles. And I didn't get the whistler, which would let me generate whistles. Although I do already have some scaffolding that once this gets built, it can start generating gold and whistles, so I might worry about that later. So I could get some more, and you can see there are three different sizes. I could see what my options would be. Um, I could come up here and get a permanent upgrade, like the ability to stockpile, 
or to shuttle my balloons around. But to get these, I need three whistles or three iron. I don't have three whistles or three iron, so those are right out. There is one other place I could go. I'm going to come up here. And I can get one card, and these are all cool special powers, or I can get two if I spend a resource, or I can get three if I spend two resources. And of course, I want to be as efficient as I can. So I think I will burn one of the water I've got. There's a resource and my only steel or iron. I'll spend both of those. So I'm spending two. I get one, two, three cards. And now, these are special powers I'll be able to use now or on a future turn. Every one of my turns, I can spend one of the cards I've got in my hand. So with the secret door, I could move some of my um, retired workers around to good effect. Or um, with my dispatcher, I can recall my medium-sized blimp, which is very, very handy. Or I could open up a treasure chest and get a couple of whistles. You know what? I can only play one per turn. I'm going to go ahead and play this right now and give myself two whistles. Toot toot. There we go. It's Whistle Mountain time now. Alrighty. And I've still got these that I could play on a future turn. And it is Jen's turn. And she's got one more worker. And she would have happily gone up there. What is she going to do? She's got a lot of water, um, which isn't really going to help her with anything necessarily. She could come over here and get some more scaffolding. Although, again, she needs whistles to be able to get three. So this would be doing an action just to get one which is not particularly exciting. If she had a... Oh boy, that'd be so nice. But she doesn't. Hmm. So yeah, she's just not very excited about that. I mean, spending her whole Dreadnought just to get one. Hmm. Now there is something else Jen can do. Uh, because so far, we have only been on our turn collecting. That's what you've seen us do every time. We send out a ship, and um, we either put it in a dock, which is the outskirts, um, along the edge, which is the first two actions you saw us do, or on a machine, and there aren't any machines yet. So, so far we've been collecting, and Jen's trying to decide where is she going to send her Dreadnought to collect one more time. Instead, we could spend our entire turn forging. And what that means is we recall all of our airships, and then we can start building and deploying workers. Now, in addition to whether we're going to collect or forge, either way, on your turn, you can use one ribbon and one card per turn if you want. So, if Jen wants to, she could flip the script and forge early. Normally, you want to get all three of your ships deployed out on the board and then forge, which means you bring them all back, uh, because it's kind of painful to spend an entire turn forging and only bring back one or two of your airships. But actually, Jen might have a reason. I think Jen is going to jump the gun. She is going to forge. And so, that means she is going to recall her ships, and then, in any order, she can build one, two, or three additions to the mechanism in the valley, and she can spend gold to deploy one worker. Either, um, you know, she can spend two gold to save a worker who's drowning, like you saw her do earlier. I guess you could consider one gold is paying somebody to save the worker, and the other one is that new worker getting them to work. Or she can just spend one gold to get one of these layabouts to work. So, I think Jen is going to recall. She's going to get her two blimps back. And now, she can start building. And, remember, she could build up to three times, although only once them for free. If she wants to do a second build, she'd have to spend water. If she wants to do a third build, she'd have to spend two water. Or, you know, or, or, um, to do three builds, she'd have to spend two water. Now, Jen only has one thing to build. The other uh, piece that she had right from the get-go as part of setup. Jen's going to go on ahead and build this right now. And um, it's free. And Jen can place this wherever she wants, although it has to touch one part. I mean, she can't build it over here. It has to touch an existing part of the, uh, the structure. And so, where's Jen going to put it? I think she will put it just like this. There we go. All right, so now Jen has made a bigger area, uh, a bunch more scaffolding that means there are potentially more spots where we could build these machines into the scaffolding. But there's more. For e Whenever you build scaffolding, you get a point for every uh, place where your scaffolding touches existing scaffolding. So as you can see, Jen gets one, two, three points 
uh, for uh, you know for reinforcing the existing stra uh, scaffolding. So Jen just got three points for that. And now she's created a place where if you put a blimp over here, you get water, water, and gold. If you put a blimp over here all by itself, you get a whistle. And so we could start earning whistles that way. So Jen has built, and she has water. If she had more pieces, machines, or other scaffolding, she could spend water to build more of it. But Jen decided to gump, jump the gun and forge. Remember, she could have had her third action be to get some more scaffolding. Then she'd build more scaffolding right now. But Jen had a reason to jump the gun, and it's this. Jen, we each started with one gold. Jen is going to spend that gold and put one of her workers to work. She, this is her starting goal she had. She will take this guy and she will put him, let's say, right here. Okay, so now Jen has two workers deployed out here on the scaffolding. And the reason Jen is doing that is because, well, remember, I've got this and I could build over here, but I, I could have built in this new spot. But that just means these. there are more places where Jen's workers being deployed will be able... Oh, you know what? Actually, no. Jen's going to put right here. These are more places that when machines get built on the scaffolding, these workers will get activated and give the owner of them, Jen in this case, more bonus points. And the nice thing is, um, because Jen has flipped the script, she, if she had spent... Her turn, getting a third one. Jen knows, since I have no ships, my next turn I was going to forge and bring everything back. And then Jen was going to have to forge and bring everything back. And then Jen knew I would get first dibs on this scaffolding that she built. So by Jen going first, she knows on my turn I don't have any ships. I can't use her scaffolding, so she'll get first dibs on it. And so I think, and plus, she's now got two workers in position waiting to get bonuses. You know, that's what these medals are over here when machines finally get built. All right, so that was Jen's turn. She forged. She recovered all of her ships. She did one build, because she only had one piece, and she spent one gold to put one worker. If she'd had two gold, she would have happily pulled this other guy out of here, thereby um, effectively earning five points because they're not drowning anymore and could have put him to work. But she'll save him later. Don't worry. He'll be fine. Uh, they're, they're very good swimmers in uh, Whistle Mountain. So that was Jen's turn. Okay. It is my turn now. Oh, and, um, right. and of course, yeah, she has all her limps. It is my turn now. And I have no choice. I've got to do a forge as well. So I'm going to bring back all three of my ships. And don't forget, I have these cards. I could play them on my turn. Oh, now this is interesting. I, I totally forgot I had this card. I, I forgot, what did I do? I, I'd put one of them over here, I think, and I'd put one of them up there. And right, I'd put this over here. So it's my turn. I'm thinking, well, my, 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 my blimps are all done. It doesn't have to be the case. I have this dispatcher. I can play one card per turn. If I play this right now, I will recall one of my airships, which means I could make a, take another turn before I have to start forging. So if I wanted to, I could drag it out. But you know what? I, I'm fine with it right now. Um, yeah, yeah. I, th I think this does make sense. I am going to go on ahead and forge, like Jen. I am not going to use either of my cards right now, but they'll come in handy later. And now I'm going to go through the same process where I can build one, two, or three things, and I've got two things to build. And I can I can put one worker to work, either somebody who's a layabout or somebody who needs a little bit of help. All righty. So, and I could do this in any order I want. I could uh, get the my worker deployed before I build so that my workers would benefit. Um, right. First of all, I'm going to build two things. I'm going to build this wet iron I got, and I'm going to build this, which will become another source of whistles and potentially gold. Uh, so since I'm going to build both of them, I'm going to have to spend one water. One of them is free. Spends, uh, spend a water for two of them. And I will... Let's see, if I go like this, oh man, look at that. That is huge. I've effectively buried this gold so that nobody can ever um, you know, land their ship next to it. Remember how at the beginning we landed next to these and we harvested all that stuff? No one will be able to get this gold, but look at this. I'm connected to one, two, three, four, five. Five um, edges of the, the existing scaffolding match what I just did. So I just made five points. Nice. Okay. And the other thing I'm going to build 
is I want to build this wet iron. But remember, I can do all of this stuff in any order I want. So I built one thing. Before I build my next thing, I'm going to spend a gold and get one of my workers deployed. Um, but remember, I have two gold. Because I picked up some before. I'm going to spend two gold. And instead of putting one of these guys to work, I'm going to rescue somebody. Hey, chum. And I'm going to put him, let's say, right... Oh, oh this is tricky. I, I'm, I'm thinking about putting him right here. Okay. And now here's the deal. The last thing I'm doing, because I spent my water, is I'm going to get this built. And because this scaffolding has gotten so huge, there's a bunch of... I could place this here and only put my worker to work. Or here. Or I could put it here and put both of our workers to work. Or I could say I could go over here and put nobody to work. Or I could come up here and put Jen to work. And um, so I would like not to give Jen the benefit. But because I put my worker here, I have to basically cover up the chance of ever earning this whistle. So actually, you know what? I think I put my worker over here instead. So first I built this and got a bunch of points. Then I put a worker down, and now I spent water. I'm going to build this. And I'm eliminating this place to get gold and this place to get iron. And I'm not putting either of Jen's workers to work. But this worker says, Wee! I'm done! I put in a good work helping build this thing. And so, whenever a worker um, is done building a machine, they slide over to the right to the first space on this uh, scoring tower. And, as you can see, I have done that. And because my workers are the first to get here, I unlock this bonus. This is a ribbon I can use whenever I want to draw another card. And, um, you know what? I'll just do it right now. I'm going to spend this ribbon and give myself another card. I now have a small market. Anytime I want, I can convert two coal into another small machine without having to do worker placement. Nice. Okay. And also, this worker who originally was going to lose me five points because he's drowning, now he's actually going to earn me a victory point because he's in this area. And um, now, Jen, eventually, this worker will have the opportunity. When, when a machine gets built in this area, he'll slide over, but it's too late. There's no metal there for him. He'll still be worth a point, but um, you know, I avoided uh, helping Jen out by, um, by building on Jen's own scaffolding. And Jen's like, ah, if she had put her new worker over here. But here's the thing. Jen put her worker up there because she realized, okay, I've got a worker that when they slide over could get this ribbon. She wanted a worker up here who could slide over and get this ribbon. So Jen was hoping to be able to get both ribbons. But if Jen had gone here, she would have been much more central. And um, that meant, you know, I, you know, it would have been much more likely that I would have put her workers to work unless I went like this by destroying one of the only ways to earn whistles, and I didn't want to do that either. So uh, Jen got a little greedy. She put her worker too high, and I was able to avoid her workforce while putting my own to work uh, to build the wet iron. Nice. Okay. And that was it. I built two things, and I rescued a drowning worker uh, during my forge action. And remember, I could still play a card. I did get a ribbon, and I used it immediately to get another card. And I haven't used a card yet, but you know what? These are secret. I'll hold on to them until I really, really need them. All right, so that was it. But now the nice thing for Jen is she is first out of the gate um, after that forging. If she had waited, then I would have gotten first dibs on everything. But now Jen gets to deploy first. She will send her Dreadnought out, and the biggest one landing right here gets her a gold, and a whistle. This is the best space to go. Now, Jen could go like this. Then she'd get water, coal, and gold, but she wouldn't get the whistle. Jen wants that whistle. So, boom. Jen now has a whistle, which is a wild card item. And she has some gold, which she'll be able to use to put more of her workers to work the next time. Alrighty. And so that was Jen's turn. It is my turn. And... Although, oh, you know what? There are two options. I totally forgot. Uh, because, okay, Jen could go here. She'd be the first to go here and uh, get the whistle and the gold. Uh-uh. Because I forgot. There's the other whistle over here. Instead, Jen could come over here and take this space, which is even better. Because it, again, will get her a whistle. And because it's adjacent to this machine, if you land on or adjacent to a machine, you run that machine. And you know a lot of machines are all about converting things into other things and all kinds of stuff. These little ones are simple. Jen could get a whistle, water, and some steel. 
So instead of just getting one gold, she could get two items by going there. So Jen went there. She got her whistle. Although, oh, Jen's got a problem. She's full of water. She can't have any more. Drat. Okay. Then, then tackle that. Jen will come over here. She'll stick with that gold since she um, is overflowing with water anyway. You want all that water so that when you forge, you can build multiple things. But unfortunately, Jen didn't. Ha Jen had all the water, but she did not have a bunch of stuff to build. So before she forges, she, uh, again, she wants to make sure she's got uh, multiple things to build. All right. And it's my turn. And now I will rush out over here and grab this spot, which arguably is better. It will give me my third whistle. And you can, I can hold up to four. And I will activate my wet iron and get some water and get some iron. I keep calling it steel. It's iron. Okay. So, and again, I could play cards, but I'm not going to. All right. It is Jen's turn. Jen is going to send her little... Oh, okay. Okay. Hold on a second. I was going to have Jen come over here. Because now she's got a whistle. She could spend it. She would get two scaffolding. That means she's got two scaffolding to build. Um, but no, 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 no. No, I mean, because there are three opportunities to go there. Jen got frozen out of building machines last time. Not this time. Jen's going to land over here because she's got two coal. And she's going to get... A, she could build the whistler or the wet pointer or the wet coal. And if, I, if I'm not going to use Jen's workers, she's going to use Jen's workers to build these machines. Although... Although, 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 you know, there are other options here. I mean, strictly speaking, what Jen would really like to do, because Jen um, is a planner, and so far neither has made use of our special powers, anytime Jen gets one of these upgrades, she gets a small building for free. Now, the problem is, the upgrades, this shuttle, to build this, requires three iron. And Jen has one. And this will give her an upgrade that um, at the end of any turn, she can always recall her little ship. So she could go forever without having to forge if she gets this. That's very nice. Alternatively, she needs three whistles to build this stockpile, which lets her start converting resources eight at a time into points. Um, which could be her whole game is just get resources and convert them into points via the stockpile. Plus, remember, when she builds one of these, she gets one of these for free. So rather than spending a whole turn, it's just that neither of them want coal. So Jen would need to get... Although, no, Jen only needs one more steel because remember, she's got a whistle. A whistle could stand in as anything. So I think, actually, for Jen's second action, for Jen's second action, she will send her little size two and she's coming back out to the machine. But me, I landed next to the machine. Jen's going to land on it. Boom. Now you can land on, you can't land on scaffolding because that would pop your balloon because it's very sharp. But you can land and dock directly on machines as long as you don't hang off the edge of a machine. And in that case, you get to activate the machine you're on plus everything you're adjacent to. So if Jen lands here, she gets steel, water, and another whistle. Steel, water, Although, again, she has no room for this water, so she's simply not going to take that, but she does get another whistle. All right. And so the whistles are starting to come in. Whistle Mountain is starting to live up to its name. And it is now my turn. And, you know, I could do the same thing. I could come over here and, well, unfortunately, I can't get this whistle, but I could land down here, get water, water, and steel. Or, I mean, Jen's left all the otter docks to me. So maybe I should start going out and, uh, you know, getting some uh, more machinery. Like, for instance, I've got one steel and two whistles. I could treat those water, and I could get a printing press, a lift, or a vault. Convert resources into double whistles and score 10 points. Oh, speaking of which, by the way, sorry, folks, I completely forgot. This is why I watched the Klingon subtitles turned off. I forgot. I got six points when I built this thing. Building things is the main way you score points in this game. I got a lot of points for the scaffolding and for that. I'm sitting at 11 points versus Jen's 3. So you definitely want to be building to this contraption. So, um, you know, Jen... I mean, I, I'm happy to have gotten the whistle. I think I want to rush out here. I got two whistles. Why don't I come over here with my little balloon and I'll spend two of those whistles to get three scaffolding. And that will set me up for quite a while. Um, and you know what? See, so this is like a nice little double whistler, a whistle coal. Uh, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and grab that one. And hey, here's another way to make steel. And 
let's go on ahead and have another way to make gold, because gold's getting kind of square. So I just uh, spent a turn spending my two whistles, so I can do lots of builds. And I remember, I could build all I could build all three of these at once if I've got two water, or if I'm willing to use a whistle as water. And I could build these in such a way that they all end up next to each other and score me a lot of adjacency points when I build them. And uh, the more scaffolding we build, the more opportunities we have to put buildings on and workers on the scaffolding. All right, so that was it. I was happy to grab a whole bunch there. It is now Jen's turn. And Jen is going to be the first to get an upgrade. She will get the shuttle, which costs three iron. She will spend two iron and one of her precious whistles to grab this upgrade, which again, once per turn, at the end of her turn, she can recall her little balloon, which means she could effectively never forge for the rest of the game if she wants. And it doesn't even cost her anything. So she'll just go on ahead and lock this in right here. You can see we can have up to six upgrades. And for most players, that'd be the end. But Jen, as a planner, when she gets an upgrade, she also gets a machine. Um, she'll go on ahead and build this wet coal because it's worth... No, she'll build the wet pointer because it generates points and it's worth seven points to build it. All right, so that was that. And a new... A, a metal pointer comes out and a new upgrade, which is a rapid loader, which means every time you activate a machine, uh, and we both activated this machine, whoever has that upgrade immediately scores a point. And this costs only two water to get. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay, I think that just changed things for Jen. She's very excited about that. Okay, but back to me. Back to my turn. I've got one more worker. And uh, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Now, I, oh, all right. I need more water because I want to build all three of these things. Um, but I need more water to do it because I'd rather not use my whistle on water. So how can I get some water? Well, it's, uh, it's not bad. How about I deploy out to the valley again and I'll just park myself right down here. And that will get me one, two, three, four water and a steel. Now that is more than I need. I've only got room for three, but I am drowning in the water stuff. Boy, I really wish I had some kind of power that let me convert water and other things. Because, you know, there's cards and upgrades and, and you know, builders machines. There's all kinds of ways to convert stuff and other stuff. So I got a bunch of water and I also got another iron. All right. And so now I've got more enough water to build all this stuff. All right. Okay. Without having to use my precious whistle. And I've got two iron, one more iron, or or... I could actually get a medium size because I two iron plus a whistle would get me a medium size, which I mean, they're great. Score twelve points for building this, and anytime somebody docks on or next to this, they get to draw a card because we built a printing press. Nice. Okay, but anyway, it's Jen's turn now. She is all tied up. All of her car, all of her. So she would have to forge. But I forgot at the end of Jen's last turn after she had this upgrade, she recalled. She used her shuttle ability and called this back because Jen doesn't want to build yet. Uh, she's got enough water. She wants to be able to build multiple things. So she's going to send this out again by using the shuttle. And um, what does she want? Oh, she wants that rapid loader, please. It only costs two water. Jen's got plenty of that. And um, she will install this. This is a power she has. And again, because she is a planner... Whenever um, she wants, she uh, or whenever she gets an upgrade, she gets another machine. She'll go on ahead and get this other point. She'll just focus on these point generating ones. Okay, so there we go. So and now a double gold generating machine and a new upgrade. It is an antique store. Convert whistles into points. All right. So if you've got a good whistle building uh, engine, you could uh, start converting them into points like crazy. Right. Okay. So uh, that was Jen's turn. It is my turn. I must forge now because I don't have a special way to recall my blimps earlier like Jen. So I'll bring all of my blimps back. Oh, by the way, at the end of Jen's turn, she brought this back again. She might as well. She could still forge if she wants. Um, but I mean, the only reason to keep it out is if she wanted to block me from being able to get, because of course there's all, you know, these are worker placement spots. Only one player can go there. Although there are some, um, abilities that let you bump people out of the, uh, of these outer docks. But anyway, so Jen recalled, cause it's not like she was preventing me because I had to recall this turn anyway. So I recall everybody, everyone. And, um, now I'm going to start building again. I'm going to spend two water so I can build three total times. And I will use this whistle as a gold so I can put another worker to work. Alrighty. 
And, hmm, and, ooh, okay. And I would like to build a machine. If I had two coal, I could play this right now to get one of these machines. So I could build a machine, because building machines is worth a lot. But I don't. Oh, and by the way, I could have also recalled one of my blimps if I wanted to go longer. And by the way, I didn't mention this before, but my secret door... You know what? You know what? Since I'm forging first, on my turn, I'm going to use my secret door. Uh, you saw me have this before. What this does is, one of my retired folks, they can go up or down. I'm going to have this guy go up. Which, boom, immediately gives me this. Because Jen was about to get it by sliding over here. But now, I mean, she can't get it because I moved up and got it. And I will turn this in immediately and give myself another whistle. And, ah, oh. All right, so anyway, this card is gone. And if I had another whistle, I would use it as coal so that I could get a machine, so that I could build a machine right now as well. But I'm a little short, so we're going to stop with that. Um, but anyway, oh wait, I did. I did, I did. I did have two whistles, because I was planning on putting another worker out. But if I use both of these whistles as a coal... No, but I can't. I can only play one card per turn. I already played my secret door to get that whistle. So that combo did not work. Anyway, so I got that whistle back. I used one whistle to get a worker out. So you, get to work, pal. I need two gold to rescue this guy. So where do I want you to go? Where am I going to build? All right, I'm going to do this in a specific order. I am going to start out like a dece. And that gets me one, two, three points for having things adjacent, you know, scaffolding adjacent other scaffolding. One, two, I can't put them on these spaces, but I'll put them up here so that eventually when he um, works, he'll slide over here to get this ribbon. Okay, so that's one, two, or no, I've done my work, I've done one, I've got two more, I'm going to build everything. Let's go on ahead and put this right here like this, and that gets me one, two, three points. Uh, one, two, three. Nice. And now let's go ahead and build this. And I'm, well, geez, can I do better than three points? There's three, there's two. Oh, here's better. One, two, nope, it's still only three. What about this? That is one, two, three. Er, drat. All right. Oh, you know what I could do? This is going to be interesting. Let's do this. I am going to build it above the danger line. Uh, I've already covered it up, so you can't see it, but let me go on ahead and reveal it again. Let's say these aren't built here. Danger! If you build above that line, which is what I'm going to do, I'm going to build this right here, thereby cutting off the ability to get that gold. There's only one way to get gold in this um, crazy contraption we're building. But I'm going to get three more points. One, two, three. And every time a machine is built above the flood line, that means the valley starts to flood. We take this. Now, it doesn't have for scaffolding, but now that I put this up here, it's possible to build machines above this flood line, which starts flooding, which takes offline. Eventually, old machines get covered, uh, blimps get sent back home, and um, you know, workers who are caught in the rising waters, they get swept into the whirlpool, so they need to be rescued. So I'm building that way up there, and now it's possible for somebody to build way, way up there. Okay, so I built all those. I scored a lot of adjacency points. I got a worker. Did I want to put him here? No, let's put him up even higher. Let's put him way up there. I mean, I could go even higher so that when he eventually retires, he'll score me six points instead of five. But no, I'm fine coming down over here, let's say. All right, okay. So that was a very big build. I got a lot of stuff built there. And, um, all right, that's it. I am done. It is Jen's turn. And, you know, Jen could forge as well, but because of her shuttle, she could just keep going if she wants to. Although, I mean, she has the water. She has two things to build. She has gold and whistles, so she could get workers. So she could get... Well, no, she wants to build a machine. She wants to build two machines that put both her workers um, to work so that they will come over here before they uh, get caught up in the rising water. Hmm. Or she could be the first to build up here because right. Okay, so anyway, no, Jen's gonna Jen's gonna forge too. She doesn't have to. Um, although man, yeah, you know, being able to shuttle again before she forges, she could just rescue this other guy and put him way up here, and that's effectively scoring five points. And then she could forge later if she wants because at the end of her turn she could recall this. 
That is super powerful. If she doesn't, if she goes on ahead and forges right now, she's she's going to build both of these. Um, one of them she'll probably build here to put this guy to work, and another one to build over here to put this guy to work. And the interesting thing is, if she does that, her blimp will be blocking me from being able to land adjacent to it. Now, I could still land on it to get the point, and that's nice. Building this, you know, if if if, I, if Jen builds this right now, this guy will slide over and be saved, and he'll score a point. But then it'll be my turn, and probably the first thing I'll do is I'll probably land right here to get a point, a steal, and a whistle, taking one of Jen's valuable things. Although on the flip side, Jen will get uh, five points for having built that. So does Jen want to do that right now, knowing that I'm about to go? Uh, because since she's got the shuttle, she could build later. She could, um, you know, right now, I mean, heck, why not go a little bit longer until she's got three things to build? You need two water? You can build three things. So I don't think Jen is going to forge right away, which means you've got to go back to waiting right over here where I think you've been waiting the whole time. I think it was right here, actually. Uh, something like that. Anyway, close to that. So, I mean, Jen could get another worker out of the water, out of the drink. Jen could go get... Jen has no cards. I've been really doing well by those cards. And chances are, I might rush out and get some more. So I think Jen says, hey, I'm going to rush right over here and I'm going to spend some resources... I don't need my coal because Jen gets small buildings for free. She's going to spend these coal to get three cards of her own. Alrighty, which is uh, anytime Jen wants, she could spend three coal and two steel. And again, whistles could pop in to get a large market. Normally, markets cost um, three iron and two coal, so it just it flips it. And she just got rid of all her iron. She's got this one, a battering ram, so she could bump players out. Which you know, which means you can't be blocked out of a space you want, but you're also helping your opponent because that means they can go longer without forging. Or she could just get a scaffolding whenever she feels like it. And I think I think she'll do that right now. And even though that looks like this, it's any size scaffolding she wants. There's a reminder on the back of the rule book what all the symbols mean. And this you'd think this means only the T-shaped scaffolding, but this means any scaffolding. So Jen's gonna go ahead and grab a scaffolding. Then when she um, builds, she'll build three things at once. And she will go on ahead and uh, she'll do this one. Because she could put this, say, over here, and that'd be one, two, three, four points. That'll be pretty nice. So now Jen's got a scaffolding and two things next time she'll build. And while she could use her shuttle to recover this at the end of her turn, she's not going to. She's going to leave it blocked so that I cannot get more cards. All right, so be it. And it's mine, and therefore I am not going to go out and get more cards, if I, which I would very much like to do. But hey, I'm the first out of the gate. I could come back over here now with a size 2, get a whistle, and run the wet iron. Yeah, let's do that. Let's uh, get some water and whistle while you work. And uh, what was the other? Oh, and get uh, get an iron as well. All right. So there we go. And all righty. And so now Jen has no choice because she didn't recall she is now going to forge. Okay, everybody comes back. Jen's going to spend um, all of her water to build all three of these things. And will she use this whistle to make it two gold? No, no, she'll she'll save the whistle for something else. She'll just use one gold to, um, to get this guy. And Jen plans to build way up here. Way up here to score this. Okay, so Jen has recovered. Remember... You can recover one person either from the, the sidelines or from the drowning pool. And Jen spent two water, so she's going to build three things. <gasps> oh no! My blimp is in the way! Jen can't build where she was going to get prime points. Well, no, she can do it over here too. No, it's not as much! It's only one, two, three! Drat! Oh! So maybe Jen should have built sooner because I blocked that space. She want, uh, yeah, Because I was going to get her four points instead. Drat, drat, drat a dee drat. Dribbity, dribbity, drat. All right. Um, well, then the best I think she can do with this is something, you know, like getting... At least she can get one, two, three this way. Yeah, one, two, three. So Jen just got three points for building that scaffolding. Okay. And that's her first build. Her second build will be the wet pointer. She'll put it over here, thereby obliterating this whistle and this. She gets seven points for building it, and this guy slides over here which gives her a ribbon, which at any time she wants, she can get a small machine. She could do that right now if she'd rather build one of these machines than that machine. 
But no, she'll save this for a special occasion, like when, you know, when, when, all right, so. And so she got over here, and this guy is worth six points. And she got seven points for building that. Five, six, seven. Nice. And she's got one more build. And so she was, she can't build, no, she could build here. Oh, see, now she's wishing she'd been down here because uh, this ribbon's gone. If she were down here, she could slide over. And on the bottom row, you always get one of these ribbons, which is rescue a worker anytime you want. Drat. But that guy's in the wrong spot. And yeah, neither of these guys, they're just going to move over here. <sighs> it's because I got both of those ribbons early. Okay, but Jen got that one way up there. And she, all right, so let's go on ahead and build. Now, here's the problem. If Jen goes like this to put this worker to work and get him out of the way of the rising waters, eventually when this water rises and this is half covered up, it will no longer function. And, oh, and speaking of, speaking of, I'm sorry, folks. Jen just did this. She built across the, the line. The water just rose. So now we have fewer places we can build. Um, if there had been any um, workers down there still on this ground level, they would have gotten swept away. So if Jen builds here, this machine is not going to, well, yeah, because there's, I mean, Jen could build up here and she could take this thing offline, even though it's only half covered. And But then this guy would, um, you know what? Okay, this guy needs saving now. Jen is going to go on ahead and build right here, even though her metal pointer might not last long. So he can get over here because she doesn't want to have to spend time getting him back out of the drink. All right, so she built that. That got her five points. Boom. All right, and that was not her original plan. Um, so that was that, and it is my turn. And so now here's a funky thing. Here's a funky Cole Medina. Oh, shoot. If I had my size two, I could put him right here. It would activate the metal pointer, give me a point and an iron. It would activate the machine I'm adjacent to, another iron and some water, and it would activate these, a whistle and a gold. But he's tied up over here. And I can't put my triple because if you're going to land directly on machines, you can't overlap across multiple machines. and You can't hang off over the edge. So I could send my little guy out here. I could come here, but then I wouldn't get the whistle. Oh, wow. Or I could come over here and get another whistle. Um, or hey, I could come up here and get a point water and a whistle. You can't remember, you can't land on scaffolding, but now there's all these different work placement spots. Or I could land right here or here. I mean, so as you might imagine, it's sooner or later, somebody's probably going to build a machine right here. And then that's going to be exciting because if you land here, you can activate both of these machines, et cetera, et cetera. And as the game goes on, you will get into the situation where there are chain reaction combos of, oh, I'll land here to activate that machine that will get me the stuff that will then let me run this other machine that does the things that will let me, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff as the game goes on. So where's my little balloon going to land? I'm tempted to come over here and get two steel, although I only have room for one steel. So I might just come over here, get my last steel, so I've got four. Uh, because also, um, I've got steel and I can use these as whistles as coal, so I could start getting big mamas. 14 point things to build, as you might. And there is space, well there's one space that a triple size thing could get built. Although we need more scaffolding to build up higher. So, I could start going for that. What am I going to do? I'm not quite sure, folks, but I think I'm going to stop right there because that should give you a pretty good idea of what Whistle Mountain is all about. Now, if you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, a 4, a 3, a 2, a 3, a 2, a 3, a 2, a 1.